evening. Uh, a really amazing uh, ceremony. Thank you, Susanna. Uh, I, I would like to invite the, the panelists for the last session. Uh, Susanna Tar, the Director of International Relations at the Hungarian University of Agriculture and Life Sciences. Uh, I guess that's you, FHSTP Event 15. Hello, Susanna. Yes. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Jose Tumers, the Head of Research Unit Smart Organization at uh, University College uh, Leuven Limburg. Uh, hello, Jose. Uh, is it Jose? Is it, uh... Uh, everyone has a personal pronunciation of my name, but uh, what's, I can live what's with your? it. What's your? Uh, my, mine is uh, Jose. Jose, okay. Uh, and uh, Alois Frechnik, uh, Chairperson of the St. Paulton University of Applied Sciences. Hello, Alois. Uh, nice uh, having you with us. Uh, I guess that uh, like yesterday, I would la I ask you, Radu, if you can turn off your camera. So we have the panel uh, on the scene. I would say once more a few words about you, Russia, and especially about the topic of, uh, of uh, today's session, and then we would uh, make the first round of your contributions in which I would like to ask you about your vision of UDRES as uh, such, your expectations uh, towards the partnership and uh, on behalf of your institution, but probably also your, your personal, what uh, you would see. When it comes to Russia, I said yesterday, we are the European representation of uh, professional higher education uh, covering uh, about 640 uh, higher education institutions, mostly universities of applied sciences, uh, professional higher education institutions, which can sum up to some about uh, 1.5 million uh, students. We have been engaged in uh, discussing the European university concept from the very beginning. Uh, we've been quite in touch with Vanessa and uh, if she emerges uh, once more, we would be happy to welcome you, welcome her within the, the panel. We are still going to sort of follow the development and learn from the experience of the institutions because we believe that uh, this is amazing uh, development, but we also foresee that there will be a number of policy issues which might be addressed both on national and uh, European levels. When it comes to engagement in regions, smart and sustainable regions, I have to say that this is the theme which we have been paying attention for the few last years, as we can see that as the emerging profiling uh, feature of uh, universities of applied sciences, but uh, probably of uh, uh, the focus of uh, the entire higher education, serving its community, uh, linking uh, with the uh, society, probably opening up. I have to say that. Uh, our dear colleagues from European University Association only recently uh, published their vision of uh, European uh, universities and it's called U Universities Without Walls. So the, there's the opening uh, space uh, between the, the higher education and the, the society. We have got a quite important uh, project uh, uh, which uh, will allow us or which allows us to map the, the scope of, uh, of uh, regional engagement activities of universities of applied sciences in five countries. I'm happy to say that uh, Hungary, Belgium and Portugal are among the, the partner countries in, uh, our, uh, in our project and we want to learn from uh, the experience through the national associations uh, but also from uh, uh, concrete cases. We hope to come up with some uh, new view on uh, how to measure the impact or how to address the impact and how to allow the institutions to self-reflect about their development because we really believe that this is uh, one of the key development uh, fields for the future. What was part of our discussion, and I think that's also something what would set up the, the basis for the further talk, when we were trying to define what would we see as the uh, as the definition of uh, or the concept of uh, engagement, we, we came with four dimensions of uh, regional engagement. One is uh, providing capacity for regional strategy. Something what we heard already, and I think we should uh, hear even more today, about engagement in regional structures, helping with the expertise uh, to develop the regional strategy. I liked very much the, the morning presentation on the Vizieme uh, region. And 
I could have felt that there should be some that there should be some interaction between the region and the and the, the university. The second dimension would be obviously reflecting uh, the regional needs in developing talents, competences, and skills. So uh, reflecting the regional uh, labor markets uh, specifics, uh, uh, the, the regional demands, but <clears throat> that should be balanced with uh, the other uh, roles. Uh, Attention to reflecting regional needs uh, in uh, applied uh, user-inspired research and innovation, and I guess that that's part of uh, some of your focus. Uh, uh, how to bring together the partners from the region, the small, medium-sized enterprises, support their development. And the last one, which uh, I would say we are a little bit struggling, but uh, it's not unimportant, I think on the contrary, is enhancing the social, civic, and cultural activities of the region, contributing to social innovation, bringing some sort of a culture to the, the community or linking uh, the, the, the region with the uh, other capacities uh, on the global. So that's our basis. Uh, we think that it's uh, of a great importance. And uh, in fact, we are trying now to come up with some sort of a statement uh, within the consultation on European education area and the European research area, promoting the specific role of universities of applied sciences in, in regional engagement. So I'd be really wondering what would be your views about uh, the topic, but let's start first with a small introduction, who you are, well, maybe the others uh, know you already during the previous meeting uh, well, but who you are, what's your vision of your dress, what are your expectations, if uh, each of you can sort of share that within a few minutes. We'll start with uh, Susanna. Yes, hello. Um, it is my true honor that uh, in this late evening uh, time so many participants are still interested in our panel discussion. Um, let me introduce myself. My name is Janatar, so I'm not the St. Burton 15. Uh, I, I could not change because of the technical um, uh, challenges, but it al already represents that uh, we somehow uh, already connected as a as a as a big entity together with with St. Burton University coordinating. Um, I'm the head of the International Relations Center at the Hungarian University of Agriculture and Life Sciences. Um, I'm working for this unit since 22 years, and um, I, I could experience the very first years of the Erasmus program. At that time, it was so-called Socrates Erasmus, uh, when Hungary, as an accessing country, could join the, this EU initiative. It has been indeed uh, a wonderful two decade journey, uh, uh, and we could try out uh, ourselves uh, how to cooperate uh, in, in different pathways uh, from um, bilateral mobility partnership to small strategic or curriculum development development partnerships, consortia through through Erasmus Mundus actions, for in, for instance. Uh, until this uh, peak uh, excellence partnership, partnership for excellence, the European University Alliances. I have recently uh, seen a slide by the Commission showing the evolution of these previously mentioned programs, and uh, I'm so proud that we are really part of the old step of this evolution. Um, Many of you previously mentioned that this is a groundbreaking initiative and also that it is not really a project but a long-term commitment or it is a process of building a new university alliance. I'm truly committed and, and I truly believe it is true and we are working on these challenges and uh, that is why, uh, why I am so much honored and that is uh, why, why we are very uh, happy to be the key, one of the key actors in building this new future. Um, who we are and, and uh, how we arrive to a consortia of University of Applied Sciences. Um, are the Hungarian partner of the consortia and our partnership with one of the key actors 
Let me name her, Dr. Katalin Sondi at St. Pölten University of Applied Sciences. And this partnership goes back to 2004. Let me simply remark that this very moment, as uh, you may share that uh, there are certain crossroads in the life, uh, but may result significant changes. Uh, meeting her uh, was simply uh, such a case. Um, and as I mentioned before, the cooperation started uh, with a small regional uh, bilateral partnership at that time. A few words about our university. Um, the name of our university, formerly Szent István University, Gödöllő, Hungary, um, has been changed to MATE, Hungarian University of Agriculture and Life Sciences, and it has been operating under um, this name as a non-profit private higher education institution since 1st of February 2021. It has been just 53 uh, days ago. Our institution, together uh, with se several other Hungarian universities, participates in the renewal of Hungarian higher education um, in accordance with the government decision on the adoption of change of pa pace um, in education medium term policy strategy 2016. Um, this process reached a decisive milestone on 1st of February 2021 when the integration of higher education and research at our university was completed by the integration of 11 research universities, uh, uh, institute and several business organizations and the new foundation model of maintaining came into being. This new name expresses the complete renewal of uh, the university, which has been in line with international and domestic tendencies, as well as the priorities indicated by the leaders of the university. Hungarian University of Agriculture and Life Sciences is a name of striking the balance between tradition and progress. It respects tradition, as it is based on the former name, uh, Hungarian University of Agricultural Sciences, that has been our name uh, before 2000, and it highlights the in institution's national attachment, and it also shows a broader perspective in accordance with international. Despite the fact that the university has been just recently established, um, the predecessor's history goes back to more than two centuries. Uh, we will celebrate the 225th anniversary of establishment of the first European agricultural higher education institution next year, which actually an active part of um, this Georgicon campus was established in 1997. Um, as an institution, I would like to highlight some, some special moments, what is important in the consortium. Um, we establish, um, we, we especially uh, consider six main target area. Uh, teaching and research of food source production, food quality and safety, water and soil as a strategic resource, environmental protection and sustainability, energy security, and bioeconomy. Uh, we have previously, we had previously 12 faculties, now we have 21 institutes. Um, the number of students um, are uh, a little bit more than uh, 16,000 students now, which actually little exceeding the limit what the project first designed. Um, however, if we just consider the active student number, then uh, we are still fitting in the box. We are really proud that we have 14% uh, percent of international student ratio, um, and we have more than 2,000 students out of 102 countries. Um, as the international coordinator, I would like to focus on these issues and maybe uh, I can Jusa, I'm afraid that we have to leave some space for the others as well. Uh, okay. Yeah, we will get back to to to, to those. Uh, okay. Jose, you are on my list as the I'm second sorry. one. You made uh, your notes uh, 
Can you tell us briefly what uh, is your expectation from UDRES? How do you see that from your perspective as the the head of research unit? Hmm. Uh, yeah, we are proud to be part of this unique project. Uh, our expectations are quite clear. Uh, our baseline is moving minds, so we shape the future professionals who will be proactive professionals, who will proactively seize all the opportunities in a globalizing world while still being regionally entrenched, anchored. So for us, um, the expectations, we see a lot of challenges, but by joining forces on a European level to join our expertise, we will we have the opportunity in this project to sit in the driving seat to mold the future of European education. And in this consortium, I see different added values. Um, we are from different culture, I, cultures within Europe. Uh, all the different regions are present. Uh, we have different backgrounds. There are two uni traditional universities and four universities of applied sciences. So when you go to the technology preparedness, we have all the different stages from fundamental research to going to market. So that's a big opportunity that this consortium has. And uh, most important, there is an active role of the region. So we will redefine higher or try to redefine higher education in co-creation with the region. The region is no longer a passive partner, but will be an active partner in a true co-creative uh, operation. That's, oh. that summarized my vision. If, if you want to, I can continue for for a long, for a whole while, but... Um, well, we, we will get back to you, but at yeah. the same time, I promised uh, Susanna that we will finish on the formal time because she has to get home before the curfew starts. So uh, we have to respect also some safety and regulations. Alois, uh, what would you add from your perspective to, to these uh, views and to, to this uh, vision? Please unmute yourself. Alois, yeah. Okay, thanks. Yeah, thank you, Michael. Um, for me, it's also a pleasure to be here and uh, to participate in this inspiring chat uh, of the UDRES conference and representing the St. Bolton University of Applied Sciences. You, you, of course, you have seen already before, Hannes Rafaseda is responsible for this project, Gabi, and Gernot Kohl for the CEO. I'm the chairperson of the board of the St. Bolton uh, University of Applied Sciences. The board is a democratically elected and a highly academic body of our University of Applied Sciences. It is responsible for implementation and organization of teaching and examinations, quality assurance for teaching as well as research, and it performs ta its tasks in accordance with the UIS Act in Austria. But let me point out at the beginning that the initiative to found the St. Bolton University of Applied Sciences was actually bottom up from local municipality and regional stakeholders exactly 24 years ago. And Gernot Kohl mentioned already in his opening speech uh, this 20, 25 years. So we exist actually because of a regional vision and initiative and because regional stakeholders derived activities from this vision and realized it. For this reason, it's, um, to my opinion, a wonderful story that UDRES, which, which focuses on smart and sustainable region, has been initiated by the Europe by University of Applied Sciences and that we can give back something to our regional founders and the region. Um, but now it will be expanded to, on a European level, um, we have to we have to put an initiative from uh, a regional level to an international level, and will contribute to the further development on the region and the society. So we ha we even reach out a new European university. Hopefully, many regional people can realize that the investment 25 years ago was successful, and that vision can successfully be implemented. So looking back with these 25 years, we have gained experience in the context of the keywords 
which are actually used in the uterus, like bottom-up initiatives, taking into account regional contexts, interdisciplinarity, uh, innovation, open learning methods, mission-oriented research, and of course some more. So we are ready to promote regional development through our open innovation and modern pedagogical approaches. Today, with this opening ceremony of UTRES, it is of course about uh, looking ahead. Our minds are full of plans. We are now in the core of building European universities. This is about development, involvement and engagement. So what are expect our expectations? Um, we expect that UTRES brings together uh, smart individuals of different social, economic, cultural backgrounds to act as a regional level and adopt a European perspective at the same time. We expect that UTRES acts as a living laboratory for the society uh, of the future of progressive European regions and connects research, innovation, education and service to the community. And we expect that UTRES promotes creativity, uh, creates space for experiments and demands agile management and flexible action to develop exciting ideas into sustainable products and smart services. Um, yeah, we could listen some of these ideas in this conference this afternoon. So what opportunities do we see? Opportunities we see in the I culture for future universities. The I stands for all these words inspiring, innovative, intercultural, international, interdisciplinary, and so on, and inclusive and intense. So this new I culture is um, exemplary for progressive, progressive European universities. We have already developed in our I lab which contains several, already several of these eyes. Um, for this ILAP, we have been awarded this Arthur Sandy, which is the Austrian National Award for Excellent Education. However, we want to go further in UTRES, uh, and UTRES will uh, be the opportunity for us participating in the core of the development of future European universities. And benefits? Um, there is already a short-term benefit for us. At the moment, um, our university is outlining its strategy for the next years. There is an immediate, immediate benefit for us that we can learn from UTRES ideas and the network in order to develop a sustainable and smart strategy for our university, embedded into the in I environment. So UTRES will definitely enrich our experiences uh, to contribute to our development process. And as a long-term benefit, of course, I wish that the achievements of UTRES will result in established i-living labs, joint degree programs, um, i-research networks, um, i-curators, and overall in a progressive European university where we all participate. That's it for the beginning. Thank you, Paul. Uh, well, it just confirms the, the ambitions which I've uh, heard uh, all, all the time. Uh, one thing is that uh, you all say, well, we are in, embedded in the region. We do things for, for the region. For me, it would be interesting to see also what's the sort of mix of uh, all those four dimensions which I was uh, think uh, how much it is sort of providing expertise for the region, how much it is focused on teaching, learning, uh, research, innovation, and, uh, and a sort of social innovation and uh, cultural things. But I was wondering as well, your regions might be of a different profile, at least if I can imagine uh, what I know about uh, uh, Limburg uh, and uh, uh, that area. I'm just around the hills from uh, Nieder Österreich, I'm in Prague. So I, I was hoping to come by car. Uh, I can imagine what could be the region in, uh, in uh, Hungary. We heard something about Latvia. What do your regional partners say? How do they see this partnership? Because uh, 
how much does it match their views and expectation? How, how is it consulted and how do you engage them? And can we do that again in a small round, but a short uh, sort of uh, description? Susanna. Um, thank you. Uh, however, I could not list uh, previously what, what would be uh, our vision to, to receive from the project, but maybe skip that. Good. Uh, uh, may I? Yeah. May I start from that? Uh, but somehow it. Find that you need to leave at uh, half past uh, yeah, seven. <laughs> um, I, I try to manage. Okay. Um, so what our university expects uh, uh, from from you, dress? Um, we uh, offer opportunities for for our students and staff to network and exchange the most actual knowledge. That that one of the key uh, uh, thing. Um, we would like to create expert groups um, to support the needs of the rural areas and exchange those knowledges in between the countries and the rural areas. Um, we would like to share in good practices uh, with other similar sized uh, European regions uh, within rural development. Uh, we would like to raise awareness of uh, on sustainability in rural areas. You might uh, recall the, the beautiful uh, presentation of our uh, Ecuadorian uh, PhD student this afternoon, um, Fernanda, um, who is uh, one of our PhD students, um, uh, coming out with this uh, uh, wonderful idea of uh, having the International Student uh, Garden Initiative, a community garden initiative. Um, we would like to increase opportunities for intercultural and linguistic trainings. We are small countries, uh, also small languages, let's say. Uh, we, we, we are not speaking English as a mother tongue, so our small regions also need these kind of trainings uh, to learn more. Um, we would like to also support with the project the visibility and, and acknowledgement of our university. Um, here in Hungary, um, we are, uh, let's say, uh, struggling with, uh, uh, with entering and competing in ranking positions. Um, we are not anymore the applied sciences uh, level universities. We are so-called um, uh, not a comprehensive university, but a university who are offering special uh, training um, at at all of the levels, so bachelor, master, and PhD program. So maybe this international involvement with, with, would uh, result uh, better ranking positions as well. We would also like to, uh, to improve the level of engagement with the community. Um, further improve, let's say, uh, what, what, what is my profession, to improve the services of internationalization, administration, and, and of, of mobilities. Uh, we would like to give as many mobilities as possible after the COVID to, to support all the initiative of, of the UDRES, because we have uh, really uh, huge funds, uh, unspent funds uh, uh, and budgets uh, within the Erasmus program. Um, uh, what else? Um, better employability of, of the students afterwards, uh, learning those things. What's the role of the regional partners, just briefly, but because uh, that was, uh, what is the role of the regional partners when you described uh, the vision? How do the regional partners react to that? Um, A few I, words. I, the, the process has just been started. Uh, everybody uh, was was happy to hear uh, uh, this initiative and that we we could gain uh, such a success. And uh, I think we we are uh, more than open to to have them on campus and uh, opening our labs to to exchange the the needs of of the local region. Um, we uh, primarily would like to focus on, on agricultural, engineering, and, and touristic-wise uh, ways of, of collaborating with, uh, with the region. So th this, these are the focus areas of, of okay. our Thank small you. campuses and regions around the country. Jose, how is yeah. uh, Limburg uh, 
the region by in Kalevan Limburg uh, region? Uh, the Limburg region is, is, is very enthusiastic uh, to uh, be part of this project. Uh, in, in Limburg, we already have uh, um, a history of reaching out to the community. We have a lot of applied research projects where, st uh, where companies uh, provide the cases, the pilot cases, and where we actively use students to work on those cases. So it's not something that happens in a laboratory only on campus, but we try to uh, bring together students and companies. So companies learn from the enthusiasm, the, the innovation of students, and students are already introduced in their future working habitat. So that's a process that we want to scale up and it, that we want to intensify in UDRES. And we would like to give it uh, an international dimension. Why not having collaborative teams in six different countries working on similar cases in six regions that are different but are still linked uh, through a lot of characteristics because we don't have a big city in our regions. Um, uh, very important is that uh, in, in Limburg, cities want to be the driving force of development. Also, the Limburg region has uh, presented a couple of months ago the, the so-called Solk Turbo Plan. It's a master plan for the coming decade. How are we going to develop the Limburg uh, region? And then you see that circular economy, artificial intelligence and active aging are very important notions in this uh, master plan. And these are also very important notions in uterus and for UCLL. So there we, yeah, it, 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 it would be very awkward that we cannot reach out to each other there because we have the same purposes, we have the same focus and the same goals. So it, it should be a match made in heaven. Thank you for that, uh, Alice. That, that would be the same the same question. And in fact, I remember because uh, I was already that time uh, working with the Czech uh, higher education institutions that we were following the establishment of the Austrian Fachhochschulen, and we were amazed by the speed by which the regional powers and uh, business powers brought you up. Because we've started a few years before the changes in Austria. And then we saw the Austrian schools just passing by with the amazing speed. And uh, the only thing uh, we had the, the bitter smile and uh, jealous comments. So I, I see that the regional uh, su support there. But how are you going to engage them in this uh, sort of multinational structure? Unmute, please. Yeah, first of all, uh, as I mentioned already in, in my opening remark, we, um, the regional basis is uh, intrinsic in our Fachhochschule. So we, we have been founded out of a regional initiative and we are based uh, very close. And uh, out of that, we have already a lot of experience on different levels um, uh, being in connection with different players of the region. Um, first of all, we have um, for example, uh, activities in research. And this might be a good example, which has been mentioned already, it is how also to, 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 to include society. We have, for example, good uh, um, projects and uh, which, we, which, we can, which we can show uh, by improving user engagement and social participation, for example, uh, of elderly people through digital communication and the entertainment platform. So we are doing the projects together where we include uh, people, uh, society, where we, um, from our side, we participate in an interdisciplinary way by uh, including people from social sciences, from uh, health sciences, and from the technical area uh, in order to do projects and together with companies who also provide technological support. So there we are already with the three, uh, uh, three, three uh, um, uh, cornerstones like uh, uh, society, 
companies and of course of us and uh, the, the, the institutions of, uh, of the region. So there we are based already with experiences in that way, but there might also be like small activities like for example hackathons where we can include very well uh, the city or the municipality companies and which is very important and crucial students. So with students, uh, this is where we can address uh, on a broad basis different actors, uh, being at companies from different interests, but also in, in projects and in creating, in co-creating um, ideas. And um, there is there are other activities which have been uh, uh, um, established in the last years. For example, um, St. Burton, uh, uh, University of St. Burton is also responsible for the Smart Up, where St. Burton, which the, is the city's initiative to support innovation, entrepreneurship and startups. So also in this area, which is very important to you, dress entrepreneurship, there is, uh, there we do already uh, 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 local, we have, we have, we are uh, locally combined with uh, players uh, and another Another very important issue is also that we are leaving, uh, leading a digital makers hub uh, out of one of the three Austrian uh, digital in innovation hubs and uh, there we are clo very close in connection with, uh, uh, with the enterprises, with, with the industry, with companies, uh, with uh, institutions and of course with st students as well from our side. So there are plenty of activities which are quite well established already in the regional level but of course uh, this is also our goal to go into international, to put it on an international level, we have already some small experiences and this um, maybe would be another example. I have mentioned our iLab, which is already a iLab which we, which, uh, which we have established in education and there we also are uh, uh, looking for companies who, are, who send us challenges for the students, which might be the, like the real world problems with which students go into the, into the analysis of the problems, go into the designing of possible solution and uh, finally also implement solutions, which might in the next step uh, uh, lead to entrepreneurship by going uh, and, and implementing uh, such projects into also a business. So there are different activities which are uh, which 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 are going on and i think with you just we can combine many of them into a basic concept and also doing it with the network on an international level perfect perfect thank you very much well uh, i'm happy that the students have been mentioned uh, quite uh, often in uh, all the contributions because uh, obviously that's uh, the the key group for higher education institutions I think uh, that's that's quite clear, and I can uh, see that the benefits are for students of so sort of getting uh, together. The the research is probably sharing the capacity. What would you see as the main challenges, uh, each of you? Because we are getting uh, to the basically to the end of the session, which uh, had to be shortened, and. Uh, I can uh, imagine that there might be issues of the sort of accepting the vision or different views of the vision. I can see the number of uh, potential uh, issues to be addressed on the national uh, level. What would you see as the, from the so far cooperation or from looking forward, what would you see as the main uh, challenges which should be addressed, Susanna? Um, I would like to maybe show uh, from a broader view. Uh, previously, uh, university is providing knowledge from a money what, what has been received by the university. Now, um, actually, uh, quite fortunately, uh, with the model change of our university, now we are forced to make uh, from knowledge money. So uh, a kind of uh, vice versa version, what, what has not been expected until until uh, today so in case we would like to uh, focus on sustainability which has been actually our, our um, motto previously as well um, being with the under the other name of the university cultivating knowledge and sustainability that was the motto of our university somehow reflecting the agricultural sector and also um, the long run strategy that uh, that we would like to focus on so um with this uh, um 
Uh, I think the challenge uh, would be the sustainability, how we can uh, survive with this excellent uh, idea of UDRESS after the project time is over, in a nutshell. Thank you. Jose, what would be the challenges from your side, uh, from your point of view? Uh, the sustainability is indeed, Susanna, a, a very major challenge. Uh, and we ca can cut it up in different pieces. Uh, first of all, language. We all try to do our best to speak English, but it's not always evident uh, for our students and for the region, the regional partners who are supposed to participate, it will be very difficult for some to use English in a proficient way. Uh, another major challenge is law regulation. Uh, in every country, educational law is very strict. For instance, in Flanders, Dutch is the official language. Uh, so, for us, there are also some intra-institutional problems. We are UC Leuven and UC Limburg, two different institutions that are one, but are not one. So, uh, and then, what are we going to do with certification? If a student wants to take an elective at St. Pölten, at Stubal, how are we going to certify it? Will it be accepted by the government who has to certify to accredit all the, the degrees? Uh, I think that there, there will be a major role for Europe uh, to, to be a bit the leverage uh, to change those conservative national uh, educational laws. And a final point, it's very interesting and thrilling to collaborate with the region but what if students, researchers, and a company or a hospital come up with a very interesting, thrilling new concept and the company wants to go to market? Who are the benefits for? So we need a whole body of contracts of legal regulation support to make this possible and to make it sustainable. Okay, well, amazing. Uh, quite a list of uh, themes and uh, happy to hear that they are already sort of identified because I think that should be the policy discussion over the next uh, years. Alex, what would be your, what would be your view? So, first of all, I agree to the challenges which have been mentioned already um, and um, so I would like to, maybe we can divide into challenges after the project and challenges uh, within the project as long as the project is running. And um, you focus probably more pro uh, for pro uh, challenges after the project, how to in the in direction of sustainability, what will happen afterwards, but within the project, it is a very complex project. We have several tracks like uh, the whole university concept um, the incubator, the the uh, the research labs, the I living lab for students, and to combine this also because each of it is already very complex, and so we also have to put it together, and this is quite challenging, and and uh, so uh, I think, um, but on the other side we all are full with ideas. And uh, so this is very positive, and I think um, uh, this is um, this is just um, uh, great to work on these uh, uh, on these issues. Uh, and so I skip with that. Thank you very much. Well, I see that uh, there are some comments uh, in the chat uh, that. Uh, uh, Susanna Pichara writes that uh, there is a preparation of the intellectual property protection documents, uh, which is great, and I think they would be needed for also for the just uh, the national uh, environment. It's not uh, just the impact of uh, of uh, the UDRES. What's uh, the challenging that you will have to follow six different country legislations? Indeed, that's uh, that might be quite a nightmare, uh, and. Uh, I believe that's why I was asking as well yesterday the, the minister how much ready are the governments ready to do that, to, to make the changes. So far I have heard that uh, there should be uh, ready. Uh, so there would be definitely the discussion and I'm really happy if we can sort of follow that, learn from that. Uh, Patricia, comment, 
that the match was made in heaven. All right, uh, interesting point. Uh, I thought that uh, the matchmaking was usually done in the pubs, but uh, yeah, we have different uh, we have different concepts. Uh, we would be definitely happy to follow and learn from you. I think there's uh, an amazing uh, pool of optimism and uh, enthusiasm, and I think uh, that's uh, the amazing uh, capacity. Uh, I'd say that I was impressed by all two days and of the power of uh, creativity and uh, ambition. We'd be happy to, well, Eurasia is the affiliate partner of the new dress, so we'll be happy as well to help uh, within our capacity. But I would like to wish all of you good uh, time together. Uh, it's definitely not a three-year project, it's a longer commitment, so good luck and uh, we'll be happy to, to learn and uh, see what's going on further. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for inviting me. It was uh, amazing to, to learn from that. Thank you and uh, see you soon somewhere.